Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our last lesson for chapter one of our evolutionary history unit. Um, today, we're going to continue to study the structure of this mystery fossil that we are looking at as paleontologists. Just as a quick reminder, this fossil was found in Pakistan, and we're trying to decide which of these three animals, a whale, a crocodile, crocodile or a wolf, um, is our mystery fossil going to be most closely related to? So we've talked about some things that we might start to look at, including comparing some of the structures of each of the animals to see which are the most related. But today, instead of thinking about the structures, we're going to start by taking a look at um, a, a quick letter that we got from the Natural History Museum where the fossil has been taken once it was taken out of the ground um, in Pakistan. So it says, we have finished putting together the bones of the mystery fossil and we found something amazing. The mystery fossil was pregnant when it died. A smaller fossil with structures just like the mystery fossil were found inside of the body of the mystery fossil. I know you're working to decide where to place the mystery fossil in the museum and that you're using similar structures to help you to decide where to place it. Maybe the fossil we found inside can help you decide what the mystery fossil is most similar to, whales, wolves, or crocodiles. So to warm up your thinking for today, what I want you to start to um, think through is this fossil we just learned was um, pregnant. So it had another one, a little baby growing inside of it that was similar to the structure of the full fossil. So I want you to think about what you know about how whales, wolves, and crocodiles give birth. And you might want to think back to what we learned from um, an article two lessons ago where we discussed how whales give birth. So I'm gonna let you pause the video here and jot these things down. Remember for each of these lessons, it's gonna be helpful to have a piece of paper and a pencil or something else to write with so that you can write down your answers. If you're not sure about one of these, that's fine. As scientists, we don't always know everything. So once you pause the video and write it down, make sure you're talking about whales, wolves, and crocodiles. And if you're not totally sure how they give birth, that's okay. All right, now, if you had a second to pause the video and answer this question right here, great. If you didn't, make sure you take a second to do that. But let's start to think about what we know. So these were our three claims that we wanted to look at. Again, this unit's question is saying, what part of the museum do we think a fossil belongs? Well, if we start to think about the way that these three specific species give birth, from our reading the other day, we should remember that whales do give live birth. Uh, wolves also give live birth, but crocodiles actually don't give live birth. Crocodiles lay eggs, um, kind of in a similar way to uh, birds. So if we're thinking about our mystery fossil and we're not only thinking about the structure, but some of the important ways that their bodies work and the way that they reproduce, as we go throughout this unit, think to yourself, which of these three claims can we, at this point, based on this new information, which of them can we eliminate? There's one that we can definitely eliminate. So if you were thinking the crocodile claim, you are right. Because crocodiles don't give live birth, at this point, it could be um, safe for us to assume that our mystery fossil, even though it does have some shared structures, it doesn't have that important function of giving a live birth. So we can eliminate this fossil, uh, excuse me, eliminate this claim so that we can start to take our mystery fossil and look a little bit more closely at the structures of whales and wolves, which is what we're gonna do next. So with your paper and pencil, it's gonna be helpful. We're gonna be comparing the body structures of our mystery fossil, our whale, and our wolf. Because now that we have eliminated the crocodile from those three different claims, we're gonna to start to compare what are we seeing that's different between our mystery fossil and these uh, two other organisms. So take a second to go ahead and jot this down. Everything in blue is what you want to write on your piece of paper. So we're creating kind of a T chart here, which is really a little bit more like an H chart because we have three different things we're gonna be comparing. 
Give you a few more seconds to get that jotted down. You can always pause the video if you need to. I have a little bit more time to write that down. And then as we're going, we're gonna be in a second here looking at some different skeletal structures of these three um, organisms. And we're gonna be writing down what are the actual uh, structures that we're seeing so that we can compare among all three of them. All right, we're gonna go ahead and move on if you need another second to go ahead and write that down. Um, go ahead and pause the video, but we're gonna move on and start to look at our mystery fossil. So as we go through each of these, you're gonna to wanna to write down and list each of these different structures that you're seeing that our fossil has. And we're gonna be starting by writing in this column right here under the mystery fossil. So you might just wanna write a little bullet point um, and then write the structure next to it if we see it. We're just gonna take these one by one. Um, if you take a look at this fossil right here, it might be a good idea to even pause the video again to have you think through and look for yourself. I'm gonna talk through what I see, but if you wanna pause and think about what you're seeing, um, that's a great idea as well. Okay, so starting here, these first two are pretty obvious, right? We should be writing down a skull and a teeth. Our mystery fossil definitely has some teeth and it definitely has a skull. If we're moving on down to the next one, neck bones. I'm noticing that definitely there are some neck bones built in right there. Um, and then we're gonna be thinking about our front limbs. Remember front limbs, depending on what type of uh, organism it is, it might be a fin, it might be a leg, it might be an arm. And if you take a look here, do you notice, does this species have front limbs? Yeah, definitely. Rib bones, yep. Backbone, this whole structure right here is its backbone. It's got a hip bone as well. Hips are right here. This kind of long bone that's right behind this leg. It's got a back leg, two back legs, and a tail. So for our mystery fossil, it actually ends up having all of these different structures. So let's move on and start to compare that to the whale structure. And I'm gonna let you just pause the video here and jot down what you are seeing that the whale structure has, and we'll come back together in a little bit to uh, check your answers. So go ahead, take a second for yourself, pause the video, take a look at this whale, and just check each of these that you notice that you have, writing the ones that you see, in this middle part of your T-chart. All right, we're gonna jump back in and take a look at the wolf body structure. So again, we're just gonna be moving over one more column. So you're gonna hopefully at this point have this column filled in with the structures that you saw in the mystery fossil, the structures that you saw in the whale fossil, and then lastly, I'm gonna ask you to pause the video one more time and take a look at what are the structures that you see for the wolf. Okay, so this was our T-chart when we started. Hopefully you were able to notice that there were some similar structures between those different fossils. So our mystery fossil had all of those things present. The whale body structure had all of them except some back limbs. And then our wolf structure also had all of the, the body structures that our mystery fossil did. So this might start to kind of help us to figure out which is most closely related to the mystery fossil, but you, what you may have noticed is that a lot of these structures are in, um, between the mystery fossil and the whale and the wolf are still, they still have the same structures in common. So um, as we continue, we're gonna want to really dig in knowing that even though a whale might not have back limbs, it still could be related to our mystery fossil, which we're gonna see here in our next activity. So in this last activity, um, you are going to want to access the modeling tool in lesson 1.5 if you have access to Amplify Online so that you can independently complete this. 
If you don't have access, we're gonna walk through it um, as a group, but just remember if you are taking the time to look at it yourself, um, it's really promoting you pushing yourself to be a learner and making sure that you're learning as much as you can from these video lessons. So um, if you, oops, let's go back. Okay, there we go. So if you are logging into Amplify, you're gonna wanna make sure that you open up Lesson 1.5, remember your screen might look a little bit different than mine, but you want to be opening up Lesson 1.5. You wanna open up Activity 4, which is the modeling tool. And then from there, there should be a link that says Shared Structures. So when you click on that, you're gonna open up and see something that looks like this. And what we're gonna be working through is assigning species A here, each of the body parts that we see that it has in common with its descendants or its, um, its descendants populations. So let's go ahead and start to think through how we might do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna think through is you're gonna notice that each of these blue boxes down at the bottom label what are for you to label what type of organism you're taking a look at. Um, and then after that, you want to start to think about what are the shared structures that both species B and species C have. Those shared structures are gonna inform us on what, what were some common shared structures of its uh, common ancestor, because we know that if these two species have a shared structure, for example, they both have a skull, we know that their common ancestor population is going to share that same structure. So that's just one example. And you're gonna to wanna to think about all the other structures here. So if you do have access to the simulation, I'm gonna ask you to pause, think through these two questions. And then there's one other set of questions. So go ahead, if you have access right now to the simulation and you're wanting to complete this independently, pause the video, complete these first two steps, And then unpause the video and you can go ahead and start to answer these next two questions. So again, if you do have access to the simulation, there should be four total questions that you're addressing um, independently. Um, I'll give you a moment to pause here. And then for those of us who are gonna be working through it together, um, you can continue to stay with me. All right. So what we're gonna be doing is we're going to look for what are some of our shared structures. So if I go in here to my simulation, we started to talk about the skull. So because both of these two species have a skull, I know that when I click on this skull over here, I'm gonna change it from a question mark and I'm gonna change it to the skull that's coded as blue. Blue is gonna be the color for this model that represents a shared structure that the common ancestor has when we're looking at the two descendants. All right, so now let's go ahead and go on, on to this backbone or its spine. So if we notice, we're gonna to think to ourselves, do the descendant populations have that shared structure? And if you do notice, yes, they both have spines, they both have backbones. So we're gonna click here. We're gonna make that blue, again, to signify that our common ancestor must have had that specific structure because these two descendants have that as their shared structure. If we take a look at their tail, this one's a little bit tricky. So let's take a look at species B and C. If you look at species B, it's got a really long, distinct tail. So that one's good, it's got a tail. But then if you look at species C, you might notice, and you might be a little bit worried, it's got this sort of really tiny tail right here. Well, that's okay. Even though the shared structures are not identical, we're gonna go ahead and make sure that we mark our common ancestor that would have had that shared tail. And I almost forgot, I've been using these terms 
that we learned last time in class, but we want to make sure that we are uh, labeling them down here at the bottom. So the two options we have is a common ancestor or a descendant species. So if you remember, the descendant species is the one that branches off of a common ancestor. We call this a common ancestor, remember, because these two descendant species share or have in common this as their ancestor. So we're almost done. We just need to look at the front limb and the back limb. So if we look at this front, the back limb right here, excuse me, we're gonna notice again, similarly to the tail, we've got one species that has a really big back limb, one has a really small back limb. And hopefully you remember it's okay. They do have that as a shared structure, even though it is not identical. You're gonna notice when it pops up over here on their common ancestor, that that back limb is a back limb, but it's not identical to either of these. So that's okay as well. Then lastly, we're gonna take a look at the front limb. And if you notice species B, does it have a front limb? No, it doesn't. This X is telling us that there is not a front limb, but species C does have one. So then instead of changing this to blue, we're gonna change this to this gray que question mark. So that way we know that mm, we're gonna to have to do a little bit more digging um, because one species has this front limb. Um, so it could have been something that was inherited, but we can't be sure because both of the species uh, don't have that shared structure. It tells us that the descendants inherited all of these other pieces, but the front limb, because one of them doesn't have it, we can't totally be sure. So once you get done, you can go ahead and hand in this modeling tool. And then that is for the most part gonna wrap up our learning here for our first unit. And as we're wrapping up this first chapter, it's always a good thing to look back as a scientist and think about what do we know and what do we not know about um, our mystery fossil. So that we're always keeping in mind that our job is to be, to be making sure we as paleontologists are helping to sort out that fossil that was found in Pakistan so that we can get it out and people can be excited and see this brand new fossil that has never been discovered before. So, what I want us to do before we move on and get ready to start chapter two is there's just a few reflection questions that I want you to think through to know where you are at right now in your learning about evolutionary history. It's okay to not know an answer, but we just wanna be aware of what have we learned and what haven't we learned. So I'm gonna read through these. If you do have the ability again to pause the video and think through for yourself, it would be helpful for you to write down which is your answer choice, and then explain your thinking. Remember, writing things down is gonna be what really enables you to lock them in your brain and remember them as we move forward throughout this unit. So number one says, I understand how the mystery fossil can have shared body structures with whales and wolves. Go ahead and put, is that something that you're currently understanding or do you not quite know that yet? And once you've explained it, and once you've answered, if you're yes or if you're not yet there, um, just make sure you're explaining your thinking. Moving on to number two. Number two says, I understand why the shared body structures between the mystery fossils, whales, and wolves also have differences. Let's so go ahead, take a second, pause the video if you need to. Answer for yourself yes or not yet and explain why. Number three says, I understand the process that happened to make the mystery fossil. Whales and wolves change from a common ancestor population. Number four says, I understand why the mystery fossil whales and wolves look very different from one another. Number five says, I understand what evidence I could use to decide where in the museum to place the mystery fossil. And then before you wrap up this chapter, it's good to think about what are you still wondering? Because when we're generating those questions, that's gonna to help to drive our learning as we start our next chapter. 
So I went through those pretty quickly. If you need to, just make sure you're going back, pausing the video, giving yourself some time to reflect on this unit, and think about what you know and what you don't yet know, knowing that it's okay if you don't know it because we're going to be finding out even more about this mystery fossil in our next two chapters. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave you there to do some reflection, and we'll see you soon when we start chapter two together.